Hey y'all, this is going to be a quick review video on how to position your needle when you are going into a vein. So first of all, let's focus on this bevel here. The bevel is the opening to the needle and the inside of the needle is called the lumen. You want that bevel facing upwards. You don't want to insert your needle the opposite way. So with the bevel facing downwards. This way you have the sharpest part of the needle, that point right there, entering the skin and entering the vessel and creating the least amount of tissue damage possible. When you're palpating the vein, make sure you notice the depth so you know how deep you're going to put that needle in. If I were to insert right here, that's going to be shallower than this area right here. And lastly, you want to make sure that your needle is 30 degrees uh, to the skin surface. So this angle right there is gonna be 30 degrees. And also make sure you notice what direction that your uh, vein is going. Not all veins are going to run up and down the arm. Some are going to be diagonal or wandering. Okay, let's talk about what happens if your needle is too shallow. It can cause bleeding, hematoma, or a missed vein. Let's go over the hematoma first. If you are too shallow and only part of your bevel is inside the vein and then the other part is inside the tissue, uh, the blood will leak into the lumen and then out into the surrounding tissue. If you're a little bit less deep, um, you'll also be partially outside of the skin. So not only is the blood going to leak uh, into the bevel and out into the tissue, but it will also leak outside on top of the skin. Now let's say, I don't have this drawn here, but if you inserted it even shallower, you completely miss the vein. So you can see that that tip of the needle is nowhere close to our vein. All right, and if you enter uh, too deeply, you can cause a hematoma and a missed vein. You'll miss your vein if you go completely through uh, the vessel because there's just no opening right here for the blood to go into. If you go in a little bit less deep, but still too deep, you're gonna have part of your bevel in the vein, part of your bevel in the tissue, and just like the too shallow example, it will flow into the bevel and out into the tissue and cause a deeper bruise. All right, and we can now talk about the needle angle. So remember this is the needle and this is the surface of the skin and that should be 30 degrees. If you instead insert it at an angle that's less than 30 degrees, like maybe like 10 or 15 or something, it's gonna be too shallow. Just to note that like some veins are going to require a more flat approach than others, um, but you really wanna make sure that you have that angle correct. Inserting a needle at less than 30 degrees is going to make it too shallow. So we run into the same problem where you miss the vein uh, or you create a hematoma. And if you insert the needle too deeply, so we look at our little chart here, if the needle is instead more like this, maybe like a 45 degree angle or a 50 degree angle, uh, chances are you're probably going to miss the vein because it's really hard to get into it at that angle. So you'll totally miss it. Sometimes you'll manage to get a little bit of your bevel in and that will cause a hematoma. And I'll upload this with uh, all my notes and everything onto a PDF that you can access from the description on this video. Okay, we can talk about um, how fast to put, it, put the needle into the arm. But if we insert the needle too slowly, that is A, going to um, increase the amount of time that your patient is in pain. So you're spending like more time in this tissue area. If I go at this rate, that's too slow. I want to be like a nice, like that. Um, and it's not just the pain. If you are going really slowly, you're increasing the amount of time that the bevel is partially in the vein and partially outside of it. So that entire time that the bevel is not completely inside uh, the vein, you have a risk of creating a hematoma. If you do what I call hesitation pokes, which is when you have your needle and you're close up to the skin and you're kind of like hesitating, where do I put it? I'm a little nervous, my hands are shaking. You can keep poking your patient like that and that is gonna contaminate your needle. Once you put it in and then take it out, there's going to be bacteria on the tip of your needle. Uh, and then when you put the needle all the way into the vein, the bacteria on the needle will get into your vein. 
Now let's say you are at the appropriate distance. When you're going into a vein, you want to be about maybe a quarter inch, half inch, an inch, like a, away from the site that you're going to go into. Because uh, that will avoid shaking hands, doing those hesitation pokes. So you want to start at about here. Uh, and if you go here and you're like, oh, wait, I changed my mind, I'm going to come out. Same problem as before. If you go partially into the vein like that and then come out again, you've created a wound where that needle had been. And that gives an opening for the blood to um, get into the tissues here. And it also gives a path to bleed onto the arm. But don't do hesitation pokes. Be confident. When you're putting that needle in, get a half inch away, put it in there fast, and hold it there. And if you're not getting blood once the needle's there, you can pull it out a little bit or push it in a little bit. But that's it. Now, when you pull out too soon, you're going to have similar results as uh, creating hesitation pokes. Let's say you are successfully collecting blood. Your needle is where it needs to be. It's at the correct angle. It's at the correct depth. But in the middle of the tube exchange or something, you accidentally jerk the needle back. Not only are you going to risk repoking them again and it being painful, uh, you are creating another wound that allows the blood to escape to the outside and then escape to the inner tissues. So if you would like me to go through these uh, strategies with you, just let me know. I would be more than happy to do it. Um, I like to do these one-on-one -on -one with me standing at one fake arm and then you standing in another fake arm. And then we do each step together uh, because that way you can watch me and I can watch you. Um, and it's easier to do that than to kind of like try to move your hand for you into the right position. All right. Well, I hope this was helpful and I will see you in class. There's one other thing I wanted to cover. Uh, when you accidentally pull the needle out too early and the patient starts bleeding, with the tourniquet still on, your first priority is to activate that safety device. You want to carefully move it away from you and the patient, pointing it away. You don't want to cross it over, get it in anybody's face. You don't want to just hold it over here and not activate the safety. You want to hold it there, activate the safety. And then as you're doing that, grab some gauze that you already have. That's why it's so important to prep for this procedure. Uh, have all of your stuff out before you start and in the spots that you want them to be on, on the side that they should be on for you. Um, apply that pressure, drop that needle into the sharps container, and then come over and release that tourniquet. Okay, uh, I think that's it.